what happens when the coconut germinates. They were our housemates in Tonga. They're the ones that really inspired us to buy by ourselves. <laughs> eBay coconut tree climber, what could go wrong? <laughs> Last episode we made our way up the coast from Airlie Beach to Magnetic Island. Now it's time to check out what this popular tropical island has in store for us. Different vibe. Yeah. And the rubbish. After being stuck on the boat for a couple of days, it was time to stretch the legs with a walk to Radical Beach. Bushtaka. It's a little green ant, so you can eat this bum. It didn't taste like much. No. Is that the you right need one? A bigger bum. Yeah. Like Baby ant. <laughs> it's a beautiful radical bay. Nice little steep walk up and down on a beautiful beach full of coconut trees. How can you play the piano? Meanwhile, Janelle's got us some lunch. Yes, spreaded coconuts with the marshmallow. I think it's a bit too far gone. It just tastes a bit it's got uh, rusty. Yeah, a little rusty. It just yeah, it's funny it doesn't that. have a sweetness. Yeah. A little bit of rubbery. Eat it. It's like a piece of lobster. <laughs> mm. Actually, it's not too bad. Inside's oh, really? good. Mm, that's really sweet, actually. Oh, that's actually really good. Mm. Yum. Can we? So, this is what happens when the coconut germinates gets a little sprout growing out of it mm. and the inside gets ready, I don't know, to lay down roots. Mmm, that's so sweet. Yeah, it's really sweet. The, the bottom first one bit, was bad, but it's the yeah. inside's really It's nice. like the top bit's like really dry and then yeah. the middle bit's just top like... top bit was near mm. the sprout. I look for the things I don't know. Maggie Island has a super chill vibe. The best way to get around here is to jump on the loop bus that takes you pretty much everywhere. Jump on the bus to go over to our friend Sophie and Pat's house, pick up their car. This road is crazy, it's so narrow. <laughs> so we're uh, just driving around in our good mate Pat and Soph's car. They were our housemates in Tonga. And uh, they've just they probably remember them in one of the videos. Yeah, if you check out our Tongan series, the sailing to Kelifasia and a few other sailing episodes with featured Pat and Sos boat, they're the ones that really inspired us to buy a boat ourselves. Cheers, off of Atu. Off of Atu. Oh, no. We just kind of miss the sunset, but still pretty bloody good. With dinner ready to go, we all sat there content, admiring the sunset over paradise with a couple of sundowners. It was then and there that Justin and I decided that we would put all our energy to save up and buy a yacht of our own. It's a nice chilled island. They've just gone and moved from one island to in Tonga to an island in Australia. And they just lent us our, their car and we've just stocked up on shopping and food and just driving back to the house now. So, uh, yeah. Really nice, nice little spot, Magnetic Island. 
So it's funny, when we moved to Tonga, uh, one of the first things we did with Soph, because Pat wasn't living there yet, we went and bought some chickens, remember? And then we also got some chicken wire fencing and made like a little veggie patch and everything. And it's so funny coming back to the house on the Australian version of Tonga because it's fully Tonganized. Like <laughs> their fence literally looks like it's straight out of Tonga. They've got chickens, they've got a little veggie patch, they've even got like popo or papaya and like all the stuff that we had in our house in Tonga with them. So they've just got like an Australian version of the house that we all lived in in Tonga. Don't you reckon? Yeah, definitely. They're just missing some dogs, that's it. <laughs> they got ducks and chickens. They got ducks and chickens. Anyway, we'll go show you the ducks. They're so funny. Go, 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 go. Ah! <laughs> it tickles so much. Ah! <laughs> and when he gets to a huffy, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> What's this duck's name, so? This one's Tupac, <laughs> and this one's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh man, that is so funny how they eat. It's like a little hand massage. It's, it's so just gentle. Got my lap. Love me. Love me. Monster. I love this place. It's so nice. How nice is being on land for a bit, Michael? Mm. It's nice. The smells and the sounds nice of the change. birds. Definitely nice sitting in the backyard watching all the birds and listening to their calls and stuff. We got some yummy kaffir lime leaves. We had heaps of fun catching up with them and they've been so kind to lend us their car to let us do a little bit of provisioning and get some fuel, which has been a massive help because you wouldn't be able to do it here otherwise. And yeah, we're just going to go and do a little bit, bit of exploring around the islands and check it out. We're going to go pick the others up on the boat now and probably go do the fort time and maybe some other few things around the place. Anyway, cheers Pat and Soph. Uh, absolute legends. The next day, with the crew in tow, we head off to check out the fort to walk. really wanted to see koalas whole trip and everyone's so good in the talk it's the best chance of seeing one. There's a cute little koala in the tree up there having a nap. He keeps moving poses, he's so cute. Uh, yeah, look at him just there. We found a koala meditation uh, retreat over here. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> so cute. Everyone's a little bit excited. Look how we feel. <laughs> koalas are getting killed. <laughs> so funny. And he's just nodding off, and you can see him like bobbing forward like a human, like when you're on the plane. And he <laughs> he fell so far forward, and he just gave up. And he woke himself up, and then he was like, oh, too tired. Mm. <laughs> so cute. The Fort Walk takes you on a tour of the defence systems installed here during World War II to protect Townfield's huge military base. That is the biggest spider ever. That one's heaps bigger. Yeah. Is it? That is heaps better. Oh, that's a moth. It's it was eating two. a moth. It's eating a moth. With its near perfect 360 degree view of the coastline, you can see why they chose it as a lookout. We're on the top of the mountain here. Uh, I'm not sure if you call it a fort or a turret because it's not really it's the for fort. guns, but I think it's called the Women's Army. So they used to be stationed in here and what they would use the range to figure out how far away boats and targets were and then they would use the calculations, take it down to the turret down there and then they would blast whatever it was. So Australia was actually bombed on a few occasions. I know of Broome and Darwin, obviously, which a lot of people know of, and also the cut of wool that was bombed in Sydney Harbour. But yeah, these were set up all along the coastline to protect the Australian coastline from any sort of invasion, um, which luckily never actually happened. So yeah, it's pretty interesting kind of Australian history. And really cool to see one of these actually intact. Like we don't actually have that many in Australia that are fully intact like that, all the ones I've seen are like crumbling ruins. So 
pretty and to see the history, I didn't know the women's army actually uh, were working in this side of the defences, so it's pretty cool to see that. When these forts were in use, they were completely covered in camo material, making them almost invisible from a distance. So the, I was just reading on that sign that it took them 10 months to build all of this, and it was actually just built by the Australian Roads Commission or whatever it was called back in the day. And they used to just use all the local crushed rock and then they actually got given these two, two huge, super powered, I think it was a, a million or 10 million candle power spotlights and two massive 150 mil guns from the Americans. It turns out that the guns donated by the US had actually been en route to the Philippines when it fell to the Japanese. They were then redirected to Townsville to protect its port against the expected rapid advance of the Japanese. What are you doing there, Michael? I'm trying to feed rock wallabies yeah. unsuccessfully. <laughs> Super cute. So cute. Um, it's dinosaur arm. T-Rex arms. Oh, he's coming down too. Oh, he's running by me now. He's running by me now. He's coming down. He's coming down. He's coming No. I gotta clean my teeth. My toothpicks. <laughs> oh, that was too good. Look at those little arms hanging down. Staunch but cute. <laughs> Rock wallabies are a must see while you're here. Whether or not you feed them is up to you but they are well accustomed to it. Just be sure to follow the recommended diet to keep these little cuties healthy. After doing the full circuit of the island by car and making the obligatory stop for the bird feeding of the Koala Village, Our mate Lincoln was keen to try out his new coconut climbing device. eBay, eBay coconut tree climber, what could go wrong? I don't have a foot anymore. Oh, it's overlapped it still. Oh, now I'm done. I'm gonna be... It's like crossing your skis. Are they locked? Can you fix it? <laughs> it feels really stable, it's just a matter of the functioning of it. Maybe come down a bit and just do an experiment. Come down a bit? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you sound confused. Can, come down? <laughs> Stick to spear fishing. <laughs> oh. I think you've caught the one and you're on the other one with the other one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, there goes those balls. James? James? <laughs> I might have a crack with just the belt. Just the belt, oh. no shoes. <laughs> I've never shredded my balls, but today yeah. could be the day. <laughs> what are the shin? The oh. shin murder. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are trusting those buckles. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, they're yeah, coming down. Oh. Got the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, you you want to try with the spikes? You yeah, get the spikes to go. Just for the entertainment. <laughs> you Give the man the spikes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be on the same side, eh? Oh, oh shit, bull. <laughs> <laughs> now I've dropped it again. <laughs> we'll end up uh, just cutting the tree down at the base <laughs> with, with all the it teeth might like. Be quicker. <laughs> it's not very fine movement. <laughs> Uh, come on. <laughs> That's Chad. <laughs> you haven't even tried coming down yet though. Oh, it's pretty easy. It's yeah, you should through. practice a, at least one one downward movement before you go any higher. <laughs> yeah. <Sorry. laughs>
Oh, the ball shimmy. Oh, yeah, he's committed. Okay. Oh. oh, the balls, the balls, the balls, the balls. I, I can see the balls getting squashed. You can see them. So much going Oh, shit, are you right? Yeah, I'm good. Go on your own. Let's get out of here. You seen Lincoln Janelle? He's gonna come coconut climbing. He never showed up. Success. The vultures are waiting. <laughs> so good. Yeah, you done? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh, nice work, man. Oh. Very good. After a few hours of trying these ball busters, Michael decided to get the coconuts down the traditional way. Mmm, <gasps> yummy. Join us next episode. Went to leave this morning and we're stuck good on a bommy. As we head further north, visiting Palm Islands and Jurassic Park and get ready to head off on another epic reef window. How'd you sleep, Lincoln? Ah, uh, sleep. <laughs> If you'd like to support us further, you can sign up on Patreon for ad-free early videos, bonus content and perks. A huge thanks to our current patrons for your ongoing support. <laughs> All in the name of coconuts. Did <laughs> even get one to land on you? What are you doing there, Michael? <laughs> that looks not great. <laughs> What did you do today? Well, I exfoliated uh, my ball sack on a pond for two balls and uh, surprising how kind of slippery a coconut tree is when you hold it. <laughs> when your balls are sliding down, it's <laughs> an amazing rate. Right.